This doesn't occur in nature. This is a type of geochemistry that maybe on some far distant star would be possible, but on Earth never gets concentrated this way. Wow. It's still hot in my hand. Hey guys, welcome back to another unboxing. You've got Rebecca here with some special guests. We have Steven and Tim. They're with Turtles Horde. They have some amazing things to show us. Tell us a little bit about Turtles Horde. Well, we specialize in sourcing unusual crystals grown for use in medicine, science, and industry, and repurposing them for use in gems. Lab created for a variety of purposes. Mm -hmm. Everything but for the gem trade. We've covered a lot on this channel. We've never covered that, so let's get started. I really have no clue what is inside this box, which is really fun. Oh my gosh, that is like hazardous material. Oh my gosh, the heft on this. I don't know what I was expecting, but I certainly wasn't expecting this. Well, this is very unusual stuff. It was grown for the medical industry. This is what is known as a scintillator crystal, which means it detects radiation. And it's supposed to detect X-rays and gamma rays for X-ray machines, but it is so darn sensitive, it will pick up UV and even blue light. You can see I'm not even directly on and then they're already starting. Then they just totally go nuts. So to clarify, does Turtles Hoard grow these? We don't grow these ourselves. Okay. Um, these are grown by a variety of different highly specialized manufacturers. That when they grow these crystals, there's a nice middle section that they can use, but they can't use the top, they can't use the bottom, and they can't use the edge. They don't have quite the same purity on the outside, so we're able to get in there and take everything they can't use and repurpose it. I love that. This is called Lutetium Aluminum Garnet, or LUAG. Okay, I know a lot about garnets, and that is not one I had ever heard of. It's a very unusual one. Yttrium Aluminum Garnet is kind of the classic lab garnet. Right. And this is sort of the, the next evolution of that. Lutetium is right below yttrium on the periodic table. Swap it in, you get a crystal that is a lot denser, that's harder yes. and has a brighter refraction. This doesn't occur in nature. This is a type of geochemistry that maybe on some far distant star would be possible, but on Earth, lutetium never gets concentrated this way. The color is actually from cerium, which okay. is added as well. The cerium causes the color and the fluorescence. Yes. Yes. Got it. The closest thing that comes to mind is sulfur that I've ever mm -hmm. seen of quite a color, but that's pretty spectacular. I think this cut is really compelling to me. It's like a nice deep cut. It's got wonderful optical properties and it's hardness eight and a half, so it's great for jewelry. It'll really make your face glow. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's green in more ways than one, too. We need this type of crystal to be grown if we want good PET scanners, good CAT scanners, good X-ray machines. This type of offcut is its just an inevitable byproduct of that. So no extra energy is going into growing this. We're just taking what's already there and repurposing it for gem usage. Is it called a simulator material because when the radiation hits it, it lights up? Exactly. Like it, it scintillates. scintillates. Yep. Okay. Do you think we could dim the lights and see how much light they emit? Let's do it. That's crazy. Oh my gosh, that is so bright. Every time we show this off, the first question is, is it radioactive? Which it is not, it's not radioactive. So for reference, we have zero lights on in the studio right now. We have the UV light hitting this and then the light emitting from this is the only other light that you see, which is amazing. I have never seen fluorescence like this ever. So bright. It doesn't look like it belongs in this world. It surely does not. Whoa. That's too cool. And these fasted pieces in this jewelry is for sale, right? Yep, we sell these on our website. And we can put the links in the description. I hear you guys have a lot more to show us. Oh, so yes. let's go with the next box. Ooh, look at that fire. That's like a lot of fire. Mm -hmm. It's the most fire you'll ever see. Most fire of any gemstone worth the name. It's some metallic material. It's a, it's a metal oxide, if that helps. When you see it inside a natural crystal, it's often golden in color. Is this rutile? Rutile's grown for use as a prism because of its incredibly high dispersion and as a substrate to grow other crystals on. When it comes out, it's usually black. It has to be annealed to get the transparent. Okay, and annealing is heating. Yes, we just put it in the kiln and roast it at the highest temperature we can for as long as we can. And some of them go transparent. Some of them just stay black forever. The ones that go transparent, most of them, we can suddenly see that they're full of cracks, but a very small subset end up clear enough to give us nice stones. One of the reasons why people like diamonds so much is the dispersion or fire, those beautiful spectral colors. 
Talk about this dispersion compared to a diamond. Dispersion is basically how well it splits white light into its component spectrum, just like the cover of Dark Side of the Moon. Diamond is at 0 0.044. Rutile is 0.33. So many orders of magnitude higher. So obviously massive amounts of fire, high refractive index. What are some other properties of this stone? Well, there's one downside to Rutile, which is its hardness. It's only about a six and a half. Uh, and pendants, earrings, it's fine, but ring wear is gonna, um, it's gonna wear out pretty quickly. It's just amazing that you could get one of these from one of those. It surprises me every time. It's so pretty. And here's our next contestant. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's a pretty color. Gemologically speaking, we'd call this pink sapphire, but in laser science, they would call this ruby because any corundum that contains chromium is ruby as far as a laser scientist is concerned. And that's what this was grown for, was for okay. use in lasers. Specifically, for the uh, Strategic Defense Initiative, also known as the Star Wars program back in the 80s. It was called the Star Wars program because it had a bunch of science fiction technology at its basis. So the idea was that they were gonna grow all of these big laser rubies, cut them up into rods, and use them to make huge lasers that they would shoot down missiles with. Now, as it happened, they grew a bunch of ruby, the money really did go into that, but we didn't really make any of the huge missile destroying lasers. That we know of. That we know <laughs> of. When the Cold War ended, the US government said, we've got all this ruby lying around, let's go to the Tucson Gem Show, set up a booth and sell it to everyone who comes in. Oh my gosh, because I'm sure it was relatively inexpensive because they just wanted to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Unfortunately, I was four at the time, so I didn't get in you on didn't that. Know, yeah. But we were lucky, we've met a few people who had some in their collection and were willing to part with it. Oh my gosh. The way they grow these, they have these beautiful rounded crystal faces on the outside. It's basically like a can of cranberry sauce. Try the UV light on it. Okay. Oh, the nice red. Yep, because it's chemically pure, yeah. just corundum with, with chromium. chromium. No iron to suppress the fluorescence. That also happens to make them excellent as a lasing medium. What they did for the very first ones, they actually just got a flash bulb that was helix shape. They wrapped it around the laser rod. When they set off the flash bulb, the photons enter through the side, they bounce end to end within the rod, and then out the end shoots out a beam. It really is so cool to see how gems can be used for, again, like really important purposes. That's what they first developed these growth processes for. They developed what's called Zotrolsky pulling, and it's a technique where they take a crucible filled with molten ruby in this case, and they just take a small seed crystal, dip it in the top, and then slowly pull and twist. Yeah. And as they pull it out, the melt comes up with it and crystallizes onto that seed, producing these gigantic single crystals. And these have a higher purity and better structural perfection than the common flame fusion material that's used for most synthetic gems and jewelry. That's interesting. Here we go. All right. Oh, I like that color. Oh my gosh, okay, that's heavy. This is dichroic moissanite. Ooh, oh, look at that. I love that. A lot of the innovation on growing this is not for gem usage at all. It's for use as a semiconductor. Moissanite is silicon carbide. It is heat resistant, hard, durable, and able to stand up to really harsh conditions. So as of this year, more than half of the chips going into cars are grown on silicon carbide rather than on silicon. Fortunately for us, the more they grow, the more mistakes they make. This has to be grown in an inert argon atmosphere. If they let in any normal air, the nitrogen seeps into the crystal structure and discolors it. And normally that leaves it black and full of defects like this one. Every now and then, you'll get one like this. That is too cool. So if you get just the right level of nitrogen, it's blue through the sides and yellow down the length. That's a side effect of nitrogen contamination. When they're faceted, if they're cut blue side up, they look mostly blue with yellow flashes. If they're cut yellow side up, they look mostly yellow with blue flashes. And if they're somewhere in between, they can look green, but up close, it's a mixture of blue and yellow. But it's beautiful in its own right. Oh, it's beautiful. I love the color. All right, let's see this dichroism in action. Phone screens are polarized, so you can show off the dichroic okay. colors. That's a nice way to see the two colors individually. I love it. Okay, they just keep coming. Okay, I don't know what this is. This is a sapphire ceramic. This is the first stage in making really big 
industrial sapphires. First, they purify the material and they heat and center it into a ceramic, which helps remove impurities. Okay. Before they start producing the monocrystals. So this is a colorless sapphire. That's a colorless sapphire. But it wasn't grown to be a gem. This one was actually grown to be a screen on the iPhone 6. Unfortunately, while they were able to build a bunch of these new kilns that could produce these giant crystals, they opened up the first set of the kilns after a month. 70% of them were cracked, discolored, hazy, or otherwise not suitable for use. That's a, that's a heart-stopping moment for that company. This is from a different company. Their factory is just shut down. It's a company called Rubicon. They had a factory in Chicago. Yeah, that sounds familiar to me. They're a pretty big deal in the crystal growing space. We were able to go down there and get our hands on one or two of their crystals. Oh my gosh. This is a small section of the crystal. They grow giant section. windows of sapphire. And this material was going to be used as the sensor windows on the F35. It's a lot better than glass for the optical properties as well as for durability. And some of them worked out, but we got just about every crystal that didn't work out. Okay, why didn't it work out? It not, it wasn't pure enough? Yes, you can see the gradient of colors. Yeah. The pink is probably a small amount of titanium that somehow got in there. The other problem you might notice, it's slightly broken. If you don't maintain the temperature just perfectly while it's growing and as it's cooling, they can shatter. The entire things weigh almost 200 pounds and they can be over four feet long. That is too cool. I'm gonna say this to all the people listening. Yeah. If you work for a crystal growing company and you have a mistake that you want to make disappear, call us, we will make it disappear for you. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Oh my gosh. This is Jimmy. Oh my gosh. We didn't draw Jimmy, that was the head crystal growers. This is a single crystal of sapphire and this is actually small by their standards. Jimmy was an experiment. They wanted to see if they could grow a square crystal. Okay. Because that's more efficient. You right. don't have all these edges you have to cut off yeah. to get what you want. They grew him in a tungsten crucible and that's why he's this color. You can see the experiment wasn't entirely successful, but we're really glad that we were able to get Jimmy and give him a nice home. I love it. How much does he weigh? Well, I haven't weighed him myself. They told me he was about 25 kilos. He feels pretty heavy. Is that tungsten left over? Yep, just a bit of the crucible still yeah. on him. This one's Coropolis pulling, which is sort of a modification that lets them grow even larger crystals. Okay, one last box. One last box. Okay. Ooh, we're back to the highlighter yellow. I'm guessing a different material. It's a different material. And I wouldn't expect you to guess it because especially as far as gems go, it's brand new. Sort of a next generation successor to Luag, G-A-G-G, -G, gadolinium aluminum gallium garnet. Okay, and what are its uses? This is used for exactly the same purposes as Luag. Luag has one really big problem, which is that it has lutetium in it. Lutetium is the rarest of the rare earths and it's incredibly expensive. This doesn't have anything nearly that rare in it. So it's a good stand in replacement. It glows in the dark. And that's really cool, but it's a huge problem if you are wanting to detect X-rays and gamma rays. You wanna know where the X-ray is now, not where it was 10 minutes ago. Right. So there are a number of elements they add huh. into the crystal lattice to suppress any afterglow. But sometimes they screw up. <laughs> We like when that happens. It's just wonderful. Okay, so let's turn off the lights and see how it glows. All right. Ooh, a bright yellow. Now there's a second flaw to this material. If you take the light off of it, it doesn't stop glowing. Oh, it's phosphorescent. Which is really cool. That is highly phosphorescent. I mean, that's keeping a good glow for quite some time. It can be visible in the dark for several hours. Wow, it's still hot in my hand. Okay, very cool phosphorescence. Do you also make jewelry out of this? Yep, GAGG is great for jewelry. It has a hardness of eight. Not quite as hard as Luag, but pretty close. So we put it in rings, earrings, pendants, whatever you like. That's really cool. Okay, so on this channel, at the end of every episode, we choose our favorites that we want the audience to take a closer look at. So each of us has to choose a one favorite on the oh, table. It's hard. It's hard. My personal favorite, I really love the dichroic moissanite. It is really hard for me to say, but I think Luag is my favorite. I just really love the green. And if you want green, this gets you the most green in one gem. Yeah, but I gotta say that first unboxing and seeing that vibrant color and then seeing the fluorescence was, that was just too cool to me. So I'm gonna pick this faceted piece. It just speaks to me. 
So take a closer look. Okay guys, that was such a fun episode. I have to say it may be one of our more unique episodes. I really did not know that half of this existed. So thank you so much for coming on the channel and sharing with us. Well, thank you so much for having us. Everyone tell Steven and Tim thank you in the comments. We'll put links in the description of their socials and the Turtles Horde website. Check out these materials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.